एस सी पी सिक्योर कॉपी कॉपी फाइल्स बिटवीन होस्ट ऑन नेटवर्क इट यूजेज एस सी पी फॉर डाटा ट्रांसफर एंड यूज द सेम फॉर ऑथेंटिकेशन एस सी पी विल आस्क फॉर पासवर्ड्स एंड पास फेज इफ दे आर नीडेड फॉर ऑथेंटिकेशन एनी फाइल मे कंटेन अ होस्ट एंड यूज स्पेसिफिकेशन टू इंडिकेट द फाइल टू बी कॉपी टू फ्रॉम दैट होस्ट कॉपीज बिटवीन टू रिमोट होस्ट आर परमिटेड To execute SCP command, we have we have to write first SCP, then the source, then destination. In source, we have to write user at the rate, then IP address, then the destination of the file, same as in destination. SSH SSH is a program for logging into a remote machine and for executing commands on a remote machine. It is used to replace login and RSH. and provide secure encrypted communication between two untrusted hosts over a secure network uh, x11 connections and arbitrary tsp ip ports can also be forwarded over the secure channel now how to execute ssh command uh, in ssh command write ssh space hostname slash user at the rate hostname and then the command To demonstrate an SSH connection, we first change the directory to home slash reply to d slash desktop and list the contents of the present computer. Now to demonstrate the connection between two machines, we write sudo ssh reply to d at One nine two dot one six eight dot three two dot two nine. Now entering the password for this computer. We have successfully logged on to that computer. Now listing the desktop items of that file. This lists the desktop items on that computer. command line basics video is going to be about ssh and scp ssh is uh, stands for secure shell and is a way for you to remotely access a server and then have a full command line access available to you and then the other is scp uh, which stands for secure copy uh, and this is a great way to to move files around back and forth uh, and is much more secure than something like ftp So we're going to start off. I'm in terminal, my command line on my local machine, uh, which is named Beach, and uh, I'm going to SSH so that I can connect to a remote server. And the first thing I need is the username on that on that server, which is tester, and then at, and then put the actual address of where I'm going. Sometimes this will be an IP address, but oftentimes you can use the domain name. Now, when I hit enter and tried to connect here, it said it refused that because it wasn't connecting to port 22, which is the default port for SSH. So sometimes when you get connection information, they'll tell you you have a port number um, because it's something other than 22, and that's important. So the way we add that information is the beginning of my command here. I'm going to put a dash p for port, and then just type in the number. So I can connect, and I'm just telling SSH specifically to use this port on the server to get in. So when I do that, now it works. Uh, it prompts me for my password, um, which I'll go ahead and type in. And now I'm actually on my remote server. I'm not on my local desktop anymore on this command line. So you can see this is telling me my location. Uh, it's not my local. So I have full command line access now on a server somewhere out in uh, I don't know St. Louis, uh, Texas. I'm not sure. So uh, if I do a working directory here, I can see I'm in my home directory. Um, I have a folder in here, and I can move around and pretty much do what I want to uh, from the command line. Uh, given the permissions that I have for this particular user on this server, uh, so the thing I want to do now is actually go and find uh, something that I want to actually download to my local machine from the remote. I want to grab this files directory because um, there's a bunch of files on the server. I don't have them locally. I'm just going to copy those down. Um, typically, you would probably use something like FTP for that, um, but we're going to use SCP because it's cooler. Um, I can go in and, uh, you know, get an individual file if I wanted, uh, or you can go in and get an entire directory. 
And so I'm going to want to get the files directory. Um, one thing we'll need to know is the path. So I have this path in my prompt, um, but if I do a uh, print working directory here, I need the full path all the way from the root of the server. So I'm just going to copy this so I can paste it later so I don't have to remember all of this and type it in because that's a real pain. So I've copied the path to the thingy that I want on my remote server. I'm going to exit and that logs me out of the remote server and now you can see I'm back on my local machine. So let me clear this out and uh, let's look at SCP. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to want to do is, uh, like previously, I'm going to type the letters SCP, that's my actual command. And then uh, before I start actually writing it out for real, we need to put two locations in and we need to put from and then to. That's the order they have to go in. So wherever I'm copying from and then where it's going to. Now I'm copying from the remote server where I just was logged in previously. Um, so I need to give it the full information. It needs to know what server and how to access it. So I need to put in my user at and then the address on the web and then that's the server. A colon to say okay that's the server information. Now where on that server am I going? And that's where I'm going to paste in the, the uh, path that I had just previously copied. Now I could just type in a particular file name if I just wanted one file I could just put that in here um, but I actually want to get the, the whole files directory so I'm gonna leave it with what I've pasted uh, and then the second part so all of that is the, the from location the second part is to location so I just want to down this load this locally to my laptop onto the desktop so that's just a local path because I'm on my, my local machine and it knows where that is now I have this files directory I want rather than an individual file so like other things in, uh, in on the command line, I need to tell the command to do this recursively because otherwise it's just going to want one thing. So let's walk through this command. scp-r means recursive because I'm getting a directory instead of an individual file. Then I'm saying this is the actual server that I want to connect to. This is where my from is. Um, I put the colon in there and then this is the actual directory I want this whole thing is from so I'm telling it to copy recursively from that address and then to is simply to my desktop here and that's the path for that so that's my command but I have one last thing I need to do because remember we have a port on this this is using the same port as SSH is using the same connection you have to use a capital P with SCP I used a lowercase p with SSH it's just the way it is capital P in the port number and now when I enter, I get prompted for my password, just like with SSH, and bam, it just went ahead and downloaded everything. So now if you go over and look on my desktop, I have a files directory, and the three files that were on my server are now copied down, not moved, but copied down to my local machine, and I can do what I want with them now. So it's that simple, that fast, um, and then we can just, uh, I'll just show you here. Remember, it's the whole from too. So if I had something on my laptop that I wanted to send to the remote machine, I would just change the order. I would put my my path here on my local machine, so like it would be desktop files, um, and then I would then give the connection information and the location on the remote server to go to. So just remember, SCP from to recursive if you have a directory, and put in a port number if you need that. And that's all it takes to access a remote server in a very secure way. Here is a short quiz for you to test yourself how much have you learned in this lecture. The first question asks you what would be the corresponding entries in the cron table to achieve the following. Execute full backup script stored at backslash home backslash any user backslash full backup on 10th June 8.30 am. B part asks you how would you execute backup shell script stored at this location at 10 a.m. and 9 p.m. every day. That is, you execute the script twice every day. In C part, you have to execute a checkup script stored at the given location every hour from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. basically at uh, in regular intervals of one hour each, like at 8 a.m., 8 uh, 9 p.m., 10 a.m. 11 a.m. and so on 
every day and in the fourth part you again have to do the same but not you do not have to execute the script every day but only on the weekdays that is from Monday to Friday the second question asks you to write a command to securely copy a file from a remote computer stored at backslash home backslash example backslash sm.sh this is the location of the remote file which is stored at the remote computer to the documents folder in the local computer the username of the remote computer host is example and the domain name is foobar.edu think about these for a moment and then we'll explore their answers let us quickly go through the answers once this is the answer for the first question a part it would execute the script stored at this location on 10th June 8.30 am since the day of the week is irrelevant so we have used an asterisk or wildcard entry for this field this is the answer for the B part it would execute the script script stored at this location twice a day that is on uh, at 10 uh, a.m. and on 9 p.m. Uh, that is 21 hours uh, I have separated these two values using a comma this would execute the script twice a day we can always do that uh, the minute is 0 0 that is the starting of the hour and uh, the day of the month the month and the day of the week are all wildcard entries since I want the script to be executed every day here is the answer for the C part it would execute the script uh, every hour from 8 hours to 17 hours that is from 8 am to 5 pm it is same as writing 8 comma 9 comma 10 up till up to 17 this is a shorthand and a useful form uh, we have used a hyphen instead of comma of a multiple commas over here again since I want the script to be executed every day we have used asterisks for these three entries or fields this is the answer for the D part it is same as C part except that I want the script to be executed only on weekdays and not on weekends so we have changed the weekdays uh, that is the day of the week from 1 to 5 earlier there was it, it used to be an asterisk over there this is the answer for the second question in which we were supposed to f write a command to securely copy a file from a, re a remote computer to a re local computer it's pretty simple scp uh, username domain name the f uh, required file with the full path and the local path the file would be copied from this location to this lo local location now let's summarize what we have learned in this lecture we started with cron daemon and we learned that cron daemon can be used for scheduling tasks entries in cron tab drive the cron daemon whatever uh, however i edit the cron tab cron table using cron tab minus e command uh, those changes would uh, uh, be used to th uh, the entries in those in that table would be used to Schedule tasks. New user accounts are added through user add command. Ch own command is used to change owner, and ch grp is used to change the group of a folder. User del is used to delete a user account. Scp command is used for securely copying files to or from a remote computer, and ssh, which is which stands for secure shell, is used to securely execute commands on a remote computer. In this lecture, some part of the video was uh, taken from these two YouTube videos, so we are providing reference for the same. Thank you for watching the lecture.